Let me check the slide or refresh my memory. We have Shauna Berry and Park Lane and Chris Landry and Abby. Yes, give us a round of applause. We'll be here for precinct operations later, but both precinct captains are the heart and soul of the party. This is where a lot of folks get their start. They are the, 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 the Democrats in their neighborhood. So if you are sitting here in the audience or at home wondering, how do I get involved in Arlington Democrats? Becoming a precinct captain is a great way to do it. It's how I got started. It's how Maggie got started. Um, it is how folks sort of enter the party and sort of learn the ropes. We'd love to have you. And I know Carol and the precinct staff team is gonna, gonna invite you to join them just a little bit later. If precinct captain isn't your cup of tea, don't worry. We got lots of great options. We got outreach out there. We're gonna talk to you about what they're doing, voter support, beyond Arlington, all of the things. So, there are plenty of options, and I hope that all of you will get involved because with every every race being contested, we need every single one of you out there fighting with us to get those uh, races over the finish line. Okay, so I am looking for a motion. Uh, oh, <laughs> Maggie. Maggie, come on, let's go. We need these races. All right. All right, so we have a motion at the table to elect these precinct captains to their position. Do I hear a second? Okay, second. That motion's properly on the table. I think we'll do this by acclamation. All those in favor? Oh. All right. Any who dare oppose these awesome reading captains? Of course not. We are so glad that they've joined us. We always welcome new leadership in Arlington Downs. Let us give them a big round of applause for stepping up. Okay. Moving right along. Joint campaign. So joint campaign, I'm going to ask a couple of pushers to come up here in a second, but by way of intro, you know, we've got lots of different groups in Arlington Dems. It's complicated, I know, but we chunk things out because all of us are busy. We've got you know, family and friends and work and all sorts of obligations. And so we chunk out the work and the volunteerism here so that we can all get it done because we want to make political activity um, and activism accessible. The joint campaign is the chunk that focuses on the, really on the candidates who are on the ballot this year, making sure that we are getting the collateral ready, that we've got the fundraising efforts going for them, that we've got canvassing going for them, that we've got all of the activities really focused on that core group of candidates that are on the ballot this year. We are fortunate this year to have an awesome joint campaign team. Really excited that two of them are here with us today. I'm going to welcome up to the stage our elected joint campaign co-chair, Brittany Degani Cashy, and our field co-chair, Scott McConnell. Thank you so much. It is so great to see you all. Um, friends, you're in this room because you're the heart and soul of the party. You are the backbone of the Democratic Party. And the fact that you're tonight here and watching proves it. So I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say how crucial the November election is. In the last two years, alone among southern states, Virginia has, among other things, expanded voting rights, protected reproductive freedom, expanded Medicare coverage, worked on sensible gun laws, accomplished criminal justice reform. <laughs> On every single one of these issues, other southern states have gone in the exact opposite direction. Lest you think I exaggerate, think for a moment about the recent legislative moves in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. Think about what happened last night when Texas, right now, for all intents and purposes, managed to convince the Supreme Court to, su to suspend Roe versus Wade. Uh, really, think how Virginia has differed from these other jurisdictions. We're now literally an oasis among all of the southern states because we have joint, united, democratic government. Yes. <laughs> we are an oasis in the country because we've done more criminal justice reform, which is the closest thing to my heart, than New York or, East, or even California. In terms of voting rights, another issue near and dear to me, we've done more than almost every single state in this country. We don't waste time in our legislature arguing about who uses what bathroom or how to control women's bodies or how to steal elections instead of winning them on ideas. We don't do that. We spend our days trying to make people's lives better, whether we agree with them or not. 
So you know all of this, but you also know that all of this can go away like that if we don't win up and down the ballot this year. This is one of the most, I keep saying this every year, but this is the most consequential election, but it keeps becoming that every single year. So yes, I'm asking you on behalf of a joint campaign just for more of your time and more of your money. I know Arlington is gonna show up, but we need to show out like our lives depend on it because they do. How big a turnout we have is all dependent on you. It's dependent on how much you join our joint campaign. It's dependent on how much you volunteer. It's dependent on buying a gold card. So if you haven't yet, please do right now. Um, and it's dependent on volunteering some more. So we're going to go through some of the logistics. Um, I like to race through the, re the slides because you can read them. But the most important thing is that we have to win. So if you haven't already gotten your gold card, please go to arlingtondemocrats.org forward slash gold card and get your gold card now. Our first event um, is going to be the Chili Cookout. We've got some awesome, awesome speakers coming up um, this year. Can you go to the next slide? Oh, Chili Cookout is happening. If you would like to submit for um, competitive chili, it's not too late, but still go get your gold card. Um, the prices are going up on September 2nd, so go get your gold card! <laughs> next slide. Wait, what happened? Is that the next slide? Oh, sorry. When I, oh, um, we are honoring uh, as our distinguished Democrat, Tom and Mary Margaret Whipple. And if you haven't heard the story of how they invented the printing, of grid cards in their basement, you have to come. It's a gold card and come. Next slide, please. I'm gonna let you read the rest of the I can do that too, yeah. Sorry, just keep saying get your gold card. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. can you talk? I'm like, I'm like, like party, we follow the hatch act, so you say that. Okay, <laughs> get your gold card. <laughs> um, our third and fourth events are the uh, Nahober trivia that is with the Arlington Young Democrats on Saturday, October 9th. And then the fourth one, the Golden Gala. Um, our special guest is still to be to be announced, but that'll be on Saturday, October 23rd. So just uh, just about a week and a half before election day. Also, get your gold card. <laughs> <laughs> because my sister is co-chairing the Golden Gala, so we all have to show up and make her work worthwhile. Next slide. Yard signs. They are in. They look great. We've got signs that have um, all of our candidates on them. We also have a number of individual candidate signs. We are going to this Saturday, thank you to the leadership of uh, Carol Burnett, we are going to be placing yard signs in every region in the county that we're allowed to place them in. Uh, we are also going to be able to get individual signs out to people that want to put them in their yard. So if you would like to get a sign, Go to arlingtondemocrats.org slash yard sign. Uh, there's no charge for them. You can make a donation. Um, Carissa, should you make a donation? You should. <laughs> and you should also get a All right. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we've also got a number of Canvas opportunities. Um, this is actually excellent timing. These are being put on by the coordinated campaign. We've gotten a second field organizer who just walked in as we were talking. So, yes, for Vandenberg, if you could stand up. Uh, a lot of you probably know him. He is a precinct captain in um, Virginia Square. Virginia Square. Uh, so he's been around Arlington. He is going to be covering uh, North Arlington, joining AJ uh, Parashar, who does uh, South Arlington, who I think you all have met. Uh, they are going to be hosting canvases every single Saturday and Sunday between now and Election Day, including this weekend. Uh, and I'm going to invite AJ to come up and give the details. Uh, 10 a.m., 1 p.m. this Saturday in a South Arlington location. We will get you that address as soon as we can. And then at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock on Sunday at Mark Field's house in North Arlington, uh, we've been getting a really good turnout, really, uh, really good feedback from voters. So please, I can ask you to come out to that. So come out this weekend, every weekend that you can make it between now and Election Day. 
And AJ, if you want to come up and guess for and introduce yourself and say a couple words. Um, so I believe there's a slide that exists for. There you go. Perfect. Um, hello everyone. I'm AJ Anjana. Um, the field organizer was originally for all of Arlington, but now we've got a new friend here with us who's going to help us here in the team. Thanks, guys. So yeah, as Scott said, I used to be a precinct captain. I actually just ended up moving to the district uh, with my fiance. So if anybody wants to be a precinct captain, well, you know, it's, it's a hot, it's a hot, it's a hot job right now. Um, so yeah, and, I'm, and now I'm just here as a field organizer. So again, yeah, we're doing events. If you have any questions, our numbers are up there. Our emails are up there. Feel free to reach out anytime, any capacity, any thoughts. If you just want to, you know, chat. Feel free to give me a ring. I'm a really talkative guy. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, our numbers are up there, our emails are up there, reach out to either of, the, of us if you have any questions about South Arlington or North Arlington, we're both here for you. Um, but the main reason I am here is to tell you about our huge, huge weekend of action that's coming up. You all know this, September 17th is early vote start day, and on the 18th and 19th, we are going to try to hit every single door in South and North Arlington to get out that vote, because Carol said this before, it's our job up here to turn out every single vote to offset the rest of the Commonwealth. So please, please come out, sign up for a shift. We really, really need you there to knock on these doors and turn out the people here. Um, and we're gonna try to make it as fun as possible. Uh, we'll maybe make yes for a dance or sing for you if you really need to, you know, see that to be there. Um, yeah, so please join us. I've sorted the link just for you guys. You can type it into your browsers and sign up for some shifts. We've got a 10 a.m., a 1 p.m., and 4 p.m. shift on Saturday, a 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. shift on Sunday. So you can sign up for either South Arlington or North Arlington. We've got shifts in both places on both days. So go for that. And then, again, canvassing every single weekend, as Scott mentioned earlier. This weekend, we will be um, on Saturday at Natalie Hall's house and on Sunday at Mark Teal's house. Thank you, Mark, who's Thank here with us. Um, and yeah, sign up for some canvassing. And the last thing that we wanted to talk to you about is uh, we're planning on hosting a fun little social event for the precinct captains and area chair here to get to know you and to say thank you for giving us so much information about um, your precincts and helping us canvas there. Um, so more information on that soon. Um, everyone is welcome, of course, uh, where you don't discriminate. But thank you for having us here. We're very excited to work with you. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. <laughs>
that will get the tax break campaign to be on our own I'm going to welcome us to the stage here. Our amazing young man is here. We're talking about this. We're going to get it all outside of the order. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, next slide. Okay, last, last month we, I said we were, um, people we show up, we went, well, we showed up in August. We showed up with the last two weeks ago, and then the next day we showed up with Dan Homer with the Democratic Asian and some American uh, Virginia. And then last weekend it was, was with Paul Hunter. So every weekend we are showing up all the way through to election. Next slide. Like I said, every weekend. And what we're going to emphasize through September is that it's early voting. That it's so important that they vote and they vote now so that we don't bother them. And we won't knock on We're going to threaten them. We're not going to knock on your door if you vote now. Well, we don't, if you don't vote now, I will keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear it. So that's true. <laughs> anyway, September 17th for October 30th, early voting. I also tell them that I will vote.com will give them all the information they need about what we're about. So the next slide. And here's our schedule. It's coming up. September 4th is Josh Cole. That's a coalition of um, grassroots organizations. Beyond Arlington, Blue Families, Wilco Indivisible, um, and Virginia Democracy. We hope to have about 10 to 12 volunteers from that combination. Plus, um, swing left. 31st Street will have 10 more. So that's 22 volunteers for Josh Cole, and he is an extremely tight group. Yes, Jesse said on Facebook, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said, right now, the money's great, but we need volunteers on the tight race. We're actually in the public hands, and we've got to win. So I appreciate every volunteer that's coming down there, and I especially appreciate you guys of the North, North Arlington. The next one after that is Winksburg. That's Beyond Arlington and the Families and Individual Waterfront for Paul Cyber. We think we can win this one. We think we can have a decent, honest human being who wants to, do, who wants to serve the 33rd district versus a guy who wins his January 6th insurrection rally. The guy named David Rock who is putting on Twitter right now to, to college students for not to take vaccines and to make up the students. He's got, he's got to get out of there. We've got to help him. <laughs> the next one after that is December 18th. We're back with Dan Helmer, which is the weekend of early voting. He needs our help. Once again, that's a type of race. Um, and he needs all the help he can get. He's getting it from mom to get in action. He's getting it from the dad. And he's getting it from the other long term. And we're not going to let out. And December 26th is Brianna School. We're referring to through Tech, Hollow, Yale, and Seek. With Brianna Shule. We are not going to let it go. And she's a great candidate. She's the chief of staff in Loudoun County chairperson, and she has had experience from the local, state, and federal level. And she's a pleasure to volunteer for. Next, next slide. And lastly, but not least, we have a phone bank for um, Jennifer Kitchen. Jennifer Kitchen is in the Shenandoah area. She needs her help to get the word out that she's a viable candidate. The last time she ran was in 2019. She has no staff, she has $30,000, and she was lost by $400 billion. We think she can win. You know, the name is out there, but she needs, you know, more volunteers. She turns it out to change it. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> Anyways, join the phone bank. If this goes well, we'll continue on for every Tuesday. So we are going to engage to so get volunteers to come up and, and uh, do, the phone, do the phone bank. So, if you're not, if all those uh, events, if you've missed them all, go to Beyond Arlington or Arlington Gems, check on events and we'll list it. And just click on and do the sign up form for our organization plus the campaign. So let's win this early vote and let's get Google. Let's get Google. We're the force of nature and everyone knows it. That's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rose. Thank you to everyone who's going out beyond Arlington helping those candidates. It's true, we've got, we've got to walk it through two 
you're going to the same time, folks. We have got to get the early kids going out for our top of the ticket candidates. It's absolutely essential. As well as our bottom of the ticket candidates, they need us in early and out in court. So that middle, right, that, that House of Delegates race, we've got to be out also in court across the Commonwealth. And Rose is leading the charge on that. Please split your time as best you can so that we are, we're moving out on all fronts. And our Arlington Democrats, I know we can do that. Thank you, Rose, for your leadership on that. All right. Yeah, let's do another applause. Another person we love is the chair of our precinct operations group. I'm going to welcome Carol Montaigne up here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good evening, Arlington Democrats. I'm so I'm so thrilled to follow Rose. I mean, it's, it's just it's such an honor. Rose, you're just really something else. Um, <laughs> right. So if it's Labor Day, well, it's almost Labor Day. It's time to get out the vote. So are you guys ready to beat the bushes and help keep Virginia blue? <laughs> Fine, please. Help me say it. What is Arlington's job? Arlington Democrats' job? Get out of the vote. Get out every single last Democratic vote to offset other parts of the state. Yes. Fine. Now. Slide. Next slide. Next slide. All right. Um, Precinct Ops plays a huge role in getting out the vote. We deliver the Democratic messenger which has critical voter information, and we hand out the sample Democratic ballot on November 2nd, which also has critical information. It identifies the down-ballot candidate as the Democratic candidates in the race. Um, we need your help in our precincts. Not slide. Yeah. <laughs> um, helping us build community and also helping us get out the vote. And if you'd like to join our precinct teams, please contact me, Carol Fontaine, no, at precinctoperations at arlingtondemocrats.org. And while we're here, next slide. Um, let's welcome again our two new precinct captains, Shauna Berry in Roslyn and Chris Landry in Abingdon. Yay. <laughs> slide. Park Lane, I do. Park Lane. Park Lane, thank you. <laughs> uh, um, what I really want to, next slide. Yeah. Uh, what I really want to focus on is how critical our volunteers are. We need everyone's help to get out all of our voters. And, you know, our, our tech chair, Lisa Backer, said to me that that phrase, if you build it, they will come, doesn't really apply to us. We've got to go get them. And we need a lot of volunteers to do that. And um, precinct operation, slide please, is coordinating with the voter support team on our 2021 edition of our all hands on deck volunteer recruitment sign up. And when you go to this form at arlingtondemocrats.org slash all hands, you can sign up for all four of these things. You can sign up for voter registration, which is already underway. Um, and it, when does voter registration end, Marcia? Uh, October 12th. October 12th. And you can sign up for early voting poll greeting, and that starts on sep September 17th. Um, and I know Marcia will talk more about this. Um, the precinct ops pieces of this are, we need a lot of volunteers to deliver the, the messenger. Um, we're going to be delivering probably over 60,000 messengers um, that has that critical voter info, and we're going to every accessible door. So we need a lot of volunteers for that. And we also need at least 700 volunteers to hand out the sample Democratic ballots on November the 2nd. So if you can help with, with any of these, please sign up with arlingtondemocrats.org slash all hands. Next slide, last slide. Um, I'm going to leave you with this thought, in my humble opinion, in my proud opinion, 
every member of Arlington Democrats should sign up for one messenger route and one cold reading shift. And I know a lot of you already do this. I hope all of you will, will do this. You can sign up at, guess where? ArlingtonDemocrats.org slash all hands. Thank you all. Don't forget your gold card.
from the 10th to the 30th, and you can sign up on Mobilize. All you have to do is you know how to go to the top and you can take the function. You can look up all three. You may come right up all three. So next slide. Then these are the additional ones: Walter Reed and Madison. Again, those come up on on Mobilize if you just look for them, and they're two Saturdays, one Sunday, um, and evening hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the last week before the election. So, I know, we got some signups going already, but, you know, obviously there's a lot of lots to go. So, next slide, please. And, March is here, I know tonight, um, she's going to start some calling um, this month. So, she's looking for volunteers to help her with that, to phone seniors, because they are reliable voters, which is what we need. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and so through the month of September, and um, so Marjorie, that's her email and her phone number. Um, so if you're interested to help her with that, please do. Okay, next slide. And the rights team, who uh, Mary and Anne got our awards, um, our Eric Special Award for Community Service, and the last the last round of our um, awards and. These two, they decided that, you know, they gave rights to vaccination appointments. So they thought, huh, maybe we give people rights to booster appointments. So they're going to call all the people they gave rights to, see if they need a right to their booster shot, and a chance to talk about the election. So, that's, um, I think, the last slide. One more, two. Ah, no, GoPro. Okay, so the season for voter protection is getting underway. Um, Diana put this out. They um, will be starting training for poll observers quite soon. They don't have an exact date, or at least she didn't have one on the document. But um, so, but you can sign up anyway, either for election day or early voting. So they use it for early voting too. So if you want to do poll watching, um, just go. That's my handy dandy uh, short URL. Uh, tinyurl.com. Vote pro volunteers. You can also uh, go email Diana if you have any questions about it, about what it involves. Um, and that is part of the Virginia Journal Project, like joint campaign. So there we go. All right, everybody, that's it.
And um, the next slide is some more information on the Diwali event. So Diwali is the festival of life, and it's celebrated in the fall. And we were really excited to combine this cultural event with the Gap the Vote event. So we are inviting our local elected. We will have voter registrations up there, and we're actively reaching out to our community members to make this be an amazing community event. It's going to be a ton of amazing food, so please mark your calendars and show up for this event. Next slide, please. Uh, from Blue Families, a lot of work uh, being done there on getting out the boat, writing postcards. Josh wanted to let everybody know that there are still some postcards that they want to write. Was, they have until September 17th to send them all out. So if you want to write some postcards, just shoot Josh a note. And again, we have another signature caucus event, which is the potluck picnic. Uh, it will be on the Sunday, September 19th, and some a lot of really fun stuff are going on. It's family friendly, and we'll be following the social distance uh, guidelines from the CDC. And then they're partnering with Rose, who will be on his this parenting event. Um, I will be at the one on Saturday for Josh Cole, and it looks like it's going to be a really good event on Saturday. So come on over. I think some of us are going to be driving down to new rides or anything. Just let us know. Next slide. From the Disability Caucus, again, you know, a lot of partnership on getting out the vote and our new phone banking. Next slide. Um, there's uh, featuring a one of their September events that they've been gearing up for is an issue roundtable with our family of Mary Cadera, who's here, and as well as Takis. And they're really interested in getting more uh, questions from the disability community into the political discussion. We had a really great partnership with that debate, actually, it was in the spring. So they're really interested in continuing that conversation centered around disability issues. Next slide, please. And the sixth, another event we're gearing up for is the phone banking for Denver Kitchen. Um, they are actively recruiting people to come. So, Mike or Daniel, if you're interested, let them know, along with uh, Rose, that we can make that event a success. Um, next slide, please. And um, they are also hoping to do, host another disability forum. Um, is with, uh, with our electives in September or in October. I think they're still working through some, uh, some of those details. You know, they're looking for you know some help in the new forum organization. So if you've got you know an extra hour in your week and you want to help out, it's a great opportunity to work with our caucuses. Obviously, we center them around these disability issues and we reach out to the community. But we love having allies come and participate in these events. I think it just creates really great synergy within the party. So. Keep that in mind if you're interested. Um, and next slide is that's it for disabilities. And to give our equality caucus update, I'm inviting Kevin up to present. Hey, everybody. This is a little short. Uh, <laughs> My name is Kevin Sosato. I'm the steering um, uh, committee representative for the Equality Caucus. So very good to see everyone. Uh, that we haven't met before. Uh, next slide. Okay, awesome. Yes. Yeah, so as you saw in the photo on the first slide, uh, we finally had our first in-person meeting this past Monday. It was Wednesday, Monday. Uh, it was a great time. Thank you. Thank you. It was a really, really great time. It's a great group of concept. Um, we had really good attendance from a bunch of folks. Some people who we expected were going to be there, and some people who we didn't expect were going to be there. So that's always a really good sign yeah. um, as a warm organizer. <laughs> Um, we were at Freddy's. We had a good sort of a, a standard meeting, dealt with some of our own business, and then we closed the place out. So uh, we did a pretty good job. Um, uh, upcoming plans and events for the year, we're definitely going to be having another meeting at the end of this month. The date and time are still being uh, worked out, so please, if you're interested in joining us, uh, just join us on the Facebook group, and that's where you'll get all the updates from us. Um, we're really excited about next month, October, is LGBT History Month. Um, Arlington, of course, is a part of the DC community, has a lot of LGBT history, and so that's a project that we're going to be working on in the caucus to try and um, highlight some more of that history through, through our social media and some of the work that we do. Um, we're also really excited about uh, starting a project where we're going to be highlighting um, some uh, queer-owned businesses, LGBT-owned businesses in Arlington. So uh, we're really excited to 
you have any ideas or suggestions along those lines, I don't, of course, have a list of every uh, queer person who owns a business in Arlington. So we would like to develop one and we would like to highlight their work. Um, and then, of course, uh, it is election season. So by the end of the, of the uh, fall here, we are looking to have an event with uh, some of our electives, especially with the, with the out of the DCC electives that we have here in Virginia. We are very blessed to have some really, really fantastic folks. So um, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Um, now I'm very excited to welcome Fatima to give our interfaith conference speech. I think I was going to say, I think this is just the already started for my community. Okay, well, good evening, Arlington Democrats. Good to see everyone here today. And let's see. Well, um, as usual, um, I want to remind everyone that we have our meetings on Tuesday night uh, between 7.30 and 9. What we've done differently, though, is um, we, we have to do every week, you know, just put the East Coalition together. And um, now that we did a fabulous job and had a huge crowd, <laughs> um, we are sort of taking a, a break and um, meeting only um, once every two weeks right now. But that doesn't mean that we don't have plenty going on. So as I said, um, interface never sleeps. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this is just uh, a sampling of what we've got going on. We are in the process of putting together a vaccine video, and it's going to be featuring faith leaders, um, and we'll be sharing the link widely pretty soon, but um, just look out for it. We should probably have it ready in the next a uh, few weeks, and hopefully, uh, well, maybe we'll even um, feature it um, next week at our, um, I'm sorry, next month at our um, at our Arlington Downs regular meeting. The Souls to the Poll is another initiative that um, some incredibly talented and hardworking members of my team um, came up with, and basically, uh, we're going to be helping people get from the interpreting my mind, I always think that this, the, the best of it. Uh, a little bit off, but I think what we're doing here is driving people to polls on Sunday, on the first Sunday, uh, October 24th, I believe it is, um, that uh, the early voting is possible. And we're hoping also to have some choirs at various locations. So, um, you know, stay tuned for that. And next on our list of events is uh, Interfaith's third Issues Forum. Um, we told you it was going to be a series, and this is number three. We are hoping to have Daryl Davis featured um, as our you know, esteemed guest for this particular forum. And um, look out for that. We're hoping to do this right after the election. Um, I know people will be really kind of tired and probably. Uh, yeah, this will be a great program to sort of, you know, watch after we're all exhausted from working to get our great leaders elected. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, finally, um, we have decided that we are going to go all out and support the efforts to help Afghan refugees. Um, this is part of our charge. This is part of what we stand for. And this is part of our family. So um, I am exceedingly fortunate to have a member of my team, Ken Spiker, who um, is working very hard on this. And so most of what we'll be doing is supporting his efforts. Um, what they're doing right now, um, his group one journey, uh, Nova FOR, which is Nova, um, well, I'm get this wrong, I don't know what the anchor is. Friends of Refugees, thank you. Thank you. Um, they, uh, they're looking for volunteers to support Afghan refugees, um, and there's an interest form that you can fill out. I'm happy to share that. If anybody wants to, to email me at interfaith caucus at arlingtondemocrats.org, I'm happy to share that. Or um, I, think, I think I may even have it right here. I have also a list of um, organizations um, and ways to help. So if anyone wants to uh, just take a real 
quick picture of that with their phone. Um, it'll give them, you know, a lot of ways to get involved. And I can also, I don't, I'm also happy to share that, you know, via email if you want to have a, the links to just use. Um, we're also requesting housing options, both temporary and longer term. And, you know, the temporary really can't be a room in somebody's house. I'm, I'm passing this along for anybody that may be interested and they can help. They're really looking for rooms with a private entrance. And the most helpful solutions are people that can offer apartments or townhouses. I mean, if we know if there's anyone in this group that can um, offer something like that. I don't know um, what the pay situation is or isn't. Unfortunately, I don't have that level of detail. Um, but we're just, you know, we're just starting with this and we're working it out as we go along. And um, or a property manager or houses, housing development groups that can provide low cost apartments for permanent housing. You know, if we know anybody in this group or if anybody else knows anybody, you know, please get in touch with me and I'll which you in touch with all of those with the right people. And finally, we are putting together a call to action um, on Afghanistan. And we will soon be putting that on the Arlington Downs uh, webpage to urge the administration and the members of Congress to do a number of things on Afghanistan, including rescuing SIDs, including protecting women that are there, including trying to get women out of Afghanistan and a whole host of other things. Um, I'm working with a number of other uh, interest groups that are aligned with our values as well to uh, put out the most comprehensive and most, most meaningful call to action that we can. And that's it, folks. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Fatima, for your work and for meeting this moment where we're in. Um, I would like to welcome Keith and offer up for the business and labor. Hey, everybody, it's Keith tonight. Uh, so, uh, let me click on that. So, we're still meeting weekly uh, by Zoom on most Thursdays. Everybody's welcome to join us. Um, we're going to be supporting the, the Nova Labor um, weekly phone banking that's starting, I think, I think it just started yesterday. And uh, September 23rd, we're going to be holding a, a forum on what we call broadly the underground economy, which is the sort of all this different wage theft, denial of overtime, and other things that happen in the construction industry. It's pretty rampant in our county. Um, and so that'll be September 23rd. We'll probably feature some uh, elected officials and candidates, too, so they can talk about the issue. Um, and then lastly, Hey. Why a gold card? <laughs> now, uh, so the last thing I want to highlight is um, right, right now. It's no, this is all internal. <laughs> all right. So that uh, in Richmond right now, there's uh, a group of workers at a Nabisco factory, I'll just keep talking, Nabisco factory that are on strike, and we're going to be raising money for them. Um, if you're interested in the issue, there's a bunch of news articles about it. They're fighting back against uh, the company's attempts to lower their wages, have extremely high overtime, uh, and taking away some of the benefits and outsourcing jobs. Um, so we're going to be raising money because those folks are going not pay right now. Um, so that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that I love uh, partnering with Keith, and I love it that Arlington Democrats know that you can be pro labor and pro business. Uh, so I, I, I think the great slide for those things. I'm just gonna, just gonna speak, but um, three things. One is please support your local small businesses. If you have a local small business um, that you'd like to get some love to, please send it my way. And um, I've slacked off a little bit and doing um, paper posts, but I probably should take that out. Um, and the other thing is, how many precincts happens here in the room? Yeah. All right. Woo. Um, so um, I, I would request that if you have small businesses in your precinct, um, you take them a messenger. 
just go in, introduce yourself. I'm with Arlington Democrat. These are our candidates it's for you as a business owner, as a member of our community. If you'd like to display it, wonderful. This is the first step to getting our businesses involved in showing that um, we support our businesses and labor. Um, and then finally, we are having an event with Blue Families on uh, the 24th, which is a Friday. Um, the tentative plan is to have in person with Dan Helmer um, writing postcards, and we're hoping we can find a house with enough outdoor space to make it safely doable. Because Blue Families, we like to include um, kids, and some of them cannot be vaccinated. Um, so that's the tentative plan. We would also talk about all the great things that Democrats have done to help delegates, to help small businesses, to help labor. Dan Helmer um, is a perfect family. He owns a small business, and he was the chief proponent of the retail right to work. So um, if you'd like to offer your house the giant bag, let me know. Um, otherwise, stay tuned. But thank you. Um, so, motivando el voto latino means motivating the Latino vote. So, in Arlington, in the new census results, Latinos can comprise 18% of our community. So, why? And so, our job at the Latino Caucus is let's motivate that vote. Next slide, please. So, we had a gavecito uh, from Sacrius. It means like an afternoon uh, coffee with Sacrius where we brought members of the Latino community, members of our community. It was great. We uh, had a great conversation. Um, and that's a picture from the event. Thank you to host on the for hosting. And then two other three upcoming events um, that they are focused on. One is another get out the vote. So, you know, wanting to increase participation within the Hispanic Latino community here in Arlington. And October is Hispanic Heritage Month. So we will be celebrating outside on October 3rd at El Colo Heights Park. Please join us. It'll be lots of fun. The potluck will have lots of good food. Next slide, please. And then the fourth event we're focused on is a food drive um, that's starting today. And it's benefit, benefiting the grassroots 10 more Wednesday moms, uh, which has been feeding 80 to 100 families. And I'll just say, you know, I used to work at Barcroft, and I think, you know, while the pandemic has decided for many of us, many of our communities, our families are still suffering given, you know, the lack of economic opportunity and just getting back on their feet. So, it's really important for us to support where we can um, with some food assistance if you're able to. So please join us. And there are some um, on the corner we have needs, like these are specific to the desires of the community that they relate back to us. So in case you're wondering what to get, you've got a list of stuff or if you don't have time, you can make a donation and the donation link is up there. Next slide. So we have a new branding for our Veterans and Military Families Caucus. And if you're interested in joining, the next meeting is going to be on the 18th um, at 1030. And the next slide is, uh, we just would like to take a moment um, to remember those who passed at the Kabul Airport um, bombing. So let's take a moment to honor those soldiers who uh, have fallen in our service. Thank you. Next slide. If you are a veteran, or you're a family member of a veteran, or if you know a family member that has, has recently moved here, please send them to Charlie at the Veterans Caucus. Uh, he's got his email up there, and they're you know looking to increase you know participation. So we'd love your support in getting the word out there. And of course, this caucus is also getting out to vote, looking to support our candidates across the Commonwealth, and making sure that we elect blue throughout the ballot in November. Yes, we met. Next slide. And they are continuing. They've done such a great job partnering with ATAC on their monthly food drive, and here they're rebranding into a cereal drive. So they will be collecting donated cereal boxes at ATAC every demo meeting that we'll have, and then also at the Chili Cook Off on Monday. 
If you're coming and you have some cereal boxes, bring them along and Charlie will make sure they get to be back. Um, and it's just before we move on, I just want to give a couple of shout outs. One, this is Landfield for all of her work with the grassroots organizations across uh, the Commonwealth. And then also to our chair, uh, Mike Heminger, who has done so much work to get all the conferences up and running. We really, we really surprised we were looking at you know all the activity and really Mike has put this functional area on his back and really brought it to what you have seen today. So thank you. <laughs> All right, should you three more? Eight, oh. We got one more. We got one more every day. Right, <laughs> okay, sorry folks. I knew I forgot something. So um with respect to the vaccine video, um, we are looking for people um we, in, in order to get a wide spectrum of religious tradition. Um, we really need your help. We like to include um, people from the following uh, big traditions, uh, Hindus, Sikh, and Buddhist. So if there's anyone in the audience that wants to be a volunteer to be in our video that is part of any one of those three uh, faith traditions, we would love to have you. Um, if you are not, or if you know anybody that would like to be a volunteer for our video, Please contact me, um, and um, we will make them a star. Thank you. All right, that's important. You want to be a star, keep Fatima. So, okay. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for all that wonderful activity. It is really awesome to see. All right, next up is our most important partner in the county, the Arlington Young Democrats. Let me ask you for a that order. I'm actually going to take this off and go, hey, what's up, Arlington Democrats? <laughs> I didn't say mine, I'm going to get it started, and I'll pass it over to our team president at our next slide, please. All right, let me tell you a little bit about Cincinnati. Anybody in Cincinnati? No? A couple people? All right, we had our uh, biannual YDA convention uh, a couple weeks ago. There's about 700 people that participated. Yeah, about 700. We have all of our business, we've had resolutions, uh, we've had draft legislation for uh, our legislators to pass, uh, we elect the officers, uh, all that stuff. We just had our Biden information. Here is a picture of the Virginia delegation, the best rugby delegation. <laughs> we had a really great time. Uh, as I mentioned, we do elect the officers, national officers for the YDA, and uh, several of our Arlington Young Democrats now hold national office with the Young Democrats of America. All right, next round, please. All right, we also had a new member social. This is something that we've been doing uh, for a couple years now. As you can see, we had really great turnout, really diverse turnout. Uh, every event that we've had this year that's been in person has been well attended. Uh, and just to remind everyone, uh, you all, everybody, anyone's welcome to come join us at Arlington Young Democrats. It's always a good time. Next slide, please. All right, I'd like, also like to thank all of our AYD volunteers that helped us out at the Arlington County Fair. Yeah, that's right, give it up. Uh, AYD actually co-sponsored the uh, fair with Arlington Democrats, and it was, uh, it was a great time. As always, I want to give a big shout out to Laura. Uh, she's probably watching tonight, but Laura, thank you so much for all that you did to help pull out. Next slide. All right, cool. I'm going to tell you a little bit about campaign training. Uh, as you heard tonight, we're getting ready to kick off our campaign season. Uh, we hosted a workshop where we did uh, tech day training, phone day training. We learned how to uh, successfully knock on doors. We had someone there showing folks how to fill out voter registration forms correctly. So overall, an all around right, good time. Next slide. All right, I'm going to kick it over to Matt to tell you about uh, the rest of our business. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, so uh, during that uh, campaign training, that was actually one of our monthly meetings, um, we uh, passed a few resolutions. Um, one of them was uh, supporting the Palestinian human rights and enforcement of U.S. policies against funding human rights abuses. Uh, another one was supporting the arts education, and the final one was uh, supporting the divestment from the police and investing in communities. Um, those were all put together by our caucus chairs. 
um, for their respective conferences. So we're very uh, happy with the engagement that we're getting from our membership on those uh, issues. Uh, next slide. Um, we just for some upcoming events um, on the weekend of September 11th, we are going to go uh, Canvas for Wendy Gadaya. Um, thank you. Uh, we will have our AYD monthly meeting virtual this uh, next uh, month, uh, or this month, I should say, um, because we were not able to secure uh, any space for that. But we have some people who are calling in for our uh, progressive foreign policy event. So that should be a very interesting conversation around some of the issues that are coming up in our foreign policy, as well as uh, some of the current events happening with Afghanistan and, and everything in between. Um, and then we will also be partnering with the Latino Caucus for the Hispanic Heritage Month. <laughs> because we wanted to be sure that we were censoring our uh, Latino brothers and sisters when it came to uh, these issues. Um, and then finally, um, get your gold card for the October Fest. We are going to be having our October Fest uh, at the Gutshall House in, uh, uh, over in Clarendon. Uh, so we are going to uh, have a great time celebrating our canvassing and also uh, remembering our dear friend Eric um, as well. So that would be great. Uh, next slide. Um, and also, we will be canvassing almost every single weekend, so please join us. Um, this is our uh, short link. It's uh, AYB, um, AYB 2021 volunteer. Um, if you want to join us for any of our out of town or in town or anywhere that we're doing any sort of uh, volunteering, that is where you go to sign up and get all of our updates. Uh, next slide. Okay, so um, in a uh, letter that was penned to his church community um, this past week, uh, Bishop Michael F. Burbridge of Arlington uh, made heinous statements about uh, trans folks and even trans children uh, where he stated that no one is transgender and anyone who claims to be is denying truth. Um, we at the Arms and Young Deaths felt that not only was this statement harmful uh, to the hundreds of thousands of trans people uh, that live in this country, many of whom live here in Arlington County, uh, but it's categorically false. Uh, Mr. Birdridge uh, preaches Jesus' teachings of love and acceptance of one another and our neighbors, but fails to extend that simple acknowledgement of humanity to our in existence to our trans brothers, sisters, and siblings. Now, I was a Catholic school, and I consider myself to be a person of faith, uh, and I remember it being taught that in Matthew 22, 39, it states that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But nowhere in all of these books does it give you the right to determine how someone can identify themselves, nor does it deny you from accepting someone for who they truly are. If Bishop Burbridge wants to preach Jesus' teachings of love and acceptance of one another and our neighbors, why does that not apply or extend to our trans folks here in Arlington or in the U.S.? There are thousands of people out there who this statement is harmful to. And you shouldn't just preach the words of Scripture. You should practice them. And if you truly want to say that you love all God's creation, that you can't, then you cannot categorically deny one's existence. Bishop Burbridge should look inward and find that acceptance and love that all people should strictly adhere to because trans people exist and trans lives matter. To the trans people living here in Arlington County and in the United States and, and to the LGBTQ plus population at large, we see you, we hear you, we accept you, and we will continue to push all of our community to do the same. And as allies, we will continue to do the work that, to make an Arlington that accepts all. And after all, the United States is not a theocracy. One religion should not govern the way we pass laws or conduct our society. And having said that, next slide, please. With the news today regarding Texas and their limiting access to almost all abortion and how the Supreme Court let it slide, we know what is most at stake during this election. The only way to protect Roe v. Wade from a packed conservative Supreme Court is to fight like hell in the state legislatures, and Virginia is that first line of defense. Absolutely. We here in the Arlington Young Democrats know that abortion is health care. Abortion is health care, plain and simple. And it is not always an easy choice. 
choice to make, and it's not always an easy choice that one wants to make, but in some cases it is a medically necessary and oftentimes very emotional choice. And it is clear that with Glenn Youngkin and the governor's mansion that that regressive and dangerous laws we see in Texas and throughout the Republican health state will be here in a second, and we cannot afford that. So it's up to us in this room in, in watching at home to let Youngkin know that he may hide behind vague words and limited public stances, but Virginians will know the truth about his radical right-wing regressive stances by November. We cannot afford anything else. We have to work, have to continue to work as hard as we can and come together to elect Democrats up and down the ballot in every race here in Arlington and throughout Virginia. We have to elect Terry McCall to be our governor, Paula Ayala to be our lieutenant governor, and Mark Perry for our attorney general, because the stakes are just too high right now to do anything else. And we know that Democrats will deliver on this issue. And at this time, when Terry governor, we're going to make sure that we, he won't have to veto all of those bills that will run limit the right to choose because we're going to expand our majority in the House of Delegates here in Virginia as well. So if you don't want to do Texas, I'm asking you to knock on those doors. If you want, if you believe that the only person that should dictate how they treat their own bodies is themselves, then you should be making those phone calls. And if you want Virginia to continue to be the safe haven for abortion and reproductive rights in the South and everywhere in the entirety of the country, please elect Democrats up and down the ballot this November. Reproductive rights are on the ballot. And we are going to fight like hell to protect them here in Virginia. And I can't wait to do it all with you all. So please, none of the buy your gold cards, will not come to court. Thank you for that. Let's give another round of applause for Oscar Barnett. We grew. Young Dick is done. We really, really appreciate all their efforts in the county. All right, folks, we are rocketing to our agenda. And I actually think we are at our, our last segment. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, you, I'll let you know that we are always really fortunate to have with us a representative either from our county board or our school board to provide an update of what's happening in the county. This month we'll be hearing from the school board and we are delighted to be joining us, which we welcome up here, the chair of our school board, Dr. Kevin Amenity. Thank you, Dr. Kevin Amenity. Thank you, Dr. And Jill, amazing meeting, very inspiring, great work, joint campaign, everyone who's presented tonight. This is a great meeting. Yeah, go team, go team. And could anyone like let me know about how I can buy gold one? <laughs> okay. Actually, Matt Royer just gave me an opportunity. You know, I was gonna start by mentioning um, I'm here to do my school board update, but it is important to elect our full Democratic ticket because they are what we need to support our schools. And I was gonna talk very briefly. Um, about Terry McCall's top of the ticket, but Matt gave me the opportunity to tell you guys about our amazing Attorney General, Mark Herring. Um, and um, moving off of his comments, yes. Let's hear it from Mark. You don't always get all that plug when you're not the top of the ticket. So um, some of you all remember this, and some of you might not know. When um, Mark Herring, the year I was elected, when I started on the school board, 2015, Mark Herring um, issued an opinion that school boards were allowed, were able to um, include gender identity in their non-discrimination um, policy. And an activist told me about it, I brought it to the board, the board was like, yes, we're doing it because we're an all democratic board and it was not a hard sell. We were one of the first, not the very first, but one of the first school boards in Virginia to include gender identity in our non-discrimination. We went on from there to develop out our policy implementation and our guidance and such, and to the point where our guidance in Arlington became fed into the model policy that the state adopted. And I had the opportunity as part of that to serve on the state committee that developed that model policy for all the school boards all across Virginia. Jennifer Boydio passed that legislation this past year, and all of that is because Mark Herring issued that opinion. Does anyone remember who the Attorney General was before Mark Herring? And oh. else? Right. So this was the, this is the kind of work that has happened for the person that's not the only thing he has done for students. Mark Harris is amazing as Attorney General. I was going to start by saying 
everything I'm about to tell you about our local schools and, and the issues that we are facing, you could end every sentence I um, say this evening by saying, and that's why we need to elect Kerry McCullough and the full Democratic ticket, because his agenda for education is about paying teachers, it's about pre-K, it's about how we need to feed children, it's about workforce development and building up modern skills in our students, critical thinking, creativity, not just taking multiple choice tests. He really believes in investing, and we need to invest more than ever in our schools, locally and statewide, and we need them for those four years because our students are going to need those types of investments for the next four years. So, let me get started. Next slide. First day of school, y'all. Woo! Monday was the first day of school in Arlington. We had over 27,000 students, third highest ever in Arlington County ever um, in our school. Five days in person for all of our students that chose that, and um, it was a great day. It was a really exciting day. We all got out. Teachers are excited. Kids are excited. But let's talk about those students for a minute. So you all know how we feel, right? Through this pandemic, sometimes when you get out, you get, you know, we react differently. We think differently about, you know, where we are in the room and who we're talking to. And think if you were a kid, how this entire pandemic may have been have affected you. And we all know Depression era, senior citizens, people who grew up during World War II, these moments of history affect people's lives. And this history, these, these students are part of history. This history is going to affect their lives. I have seen amazing artwork, amazing, I've heard amazing poetry this last year. These students are interesting. They are extraordinary. They have already proven that they're able to adapt. They're resilient. It is our job as a community, it is our job on the school board and in the school system and across the Commonwealth and the nation to make sure that this pandemic only informs them as how they live out their lives, but does not negatively impact them. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more too, but I'm telling you, these are extraordinary kids. Now, you also know, if you see these names that I say that, about all of our students every year. Um, what is different is we always, every year, want to serve our students provide for their needs, social emotional needs, how's their mental health, what do they need academically, are they behind, do they need to go you know, beyond where most of the other students, what do they need on a personal level. We do that every year. We have the resources for our self schools. Thanks to who? You all, taxpayers, supporters, um, those of you who made ensure that we have hard-working school board members who ensure that we are getting those supports to our students. We have reading specialists in all of our schools. We have math coaches. We have gifted resource teachers. We have a model in our region that has served us every year, year in and year out, to ensure our students are getting that support. This year, those needs for support are bigger than ever, and we know it. So we've got the resources in hand and ready to get to work. So, next slide, please. Um, we've got a lot of safety protocols in place and a lot of things going on to make sure that our students can be safe in our school. Remember that age 11 and under are not eligible to be vaccinated. That's all of our elementary students, of course our pre-K, and a lot of our sixth graders and maybe a few seventh graders. So we have a lot going on to make sure that they are safe in our school. I want to tell you just about a few of them. There's a lot of stuff if you get on our website and read all about all the things we're doing, but there's a few things that you might want to know. One is every student, every family who wants to opt in for their students can be tested for COVID every single week for free in their school. We are testing students in the school. Yeah, thank you, that's huge. It's huge. And that is how we are going to control what happens and how, this, how, the, how the, um, the virus could play out, right? You're not gonna hear zero cases in our school. We are gonna have cases. You're gonna hear about quarantine, but that's the system working. That means we're identifying students who have to pass the virus we're getting them quarantine, and we can continue to operate our schools. That's super, super important. I hope you already heard about, we work together with the county board. We have all issued a vaccine mandate for our staff. That is extremely important. That's also how we keep our students safe. And getting off the virus for just a second, another thing that is amazing, good policy, and only happened because of the pandemic, is that the federal government is providing free breakfast and lunch to every single student. I see some surprise looks going on. There's so much going on. There's so much going on. We don't get covered very much in the press, but, um, you know, so a lot of good stuff. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always get a hold of us. But honestly, the website is so full of information. Okay, next slide. 
Let's go back and talk about our students for a minute. Okay, I already talked about how we know they have needs, right? Um, we have a lot of big plans to do, a lot of assessments to really understand them on a personal level, especially those social emotional check-ins, mental health check-ins. The one thing that we already know, because every spring, except in the middle of the pandemic, every spring for, by federal guidelines, we do have to do those data back testing. So we do know, we do have some results on our students and how they performed last year um, in the school. Now, we could talk for a long time about what the test scores mean. Um, not every student, 25% of our students didn't take them. There were no retakes, which usually increased about half rate by 10%. Um, that said, it is, you all again know, um, as I just campaign, I have always talked about that test scores are not the outcome we're seeking. Multiple choice tests are not the point, and we talk about test scores as outcome, students are not outcome. We want to use any information we have about our students as informing what we're going to do next. That's what those test scores are about, and that's what the assessments we'll be doing in the fall will be about. Um, Reading was down a little bit compared to where we've been before, but within that margin of the retake um, differences. But math actually didn't look very good. That happened in Arlington, that happened across the Commonwealth, that happened actually across the country. Scores are not very good this year. Um, but the fact is, we have not been focusing on math instruction um, as a school system. We've talked a lot about literacy for many years. This is a chance for us to really start talking about math. Some of you may know that before the pandemic, there was a lot of work happening about how, you know, we've been teaching math the same way for 100 years, but there might be some new ways, new topics we need to cover, new concepts, new ways of doing new sequences. There's a lot going on with math instruction. There's a lot that's going to happen. It's really exciting stuff. We're going to be right on top of it. We're going to have a long session on it at the end of this month, September 30th, um, and really, really big into math. I'm excited to be on a math person, right? All right, so we are going to be then providing those free supports, accelerated learning. You can call it anything you want. It's all the same thing. Addressing students' needs. You know, you can't just shovel fields into them. You got to scaffold. You got to keep building back. You got to reinforce. We are going to get these students everything they need. It's not going to happen in one year. It's a long process, and that's why what we have to elect Harry McCullough and pull their tickets. Okay. Next slide. It's all about students, 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 it always is, but we have a lot of other planning and, and, and um, things happening this year, as we do every year. Just I'll call out three, this is a list of a number of things we're doing, um, but there's three quick things. Um, I mentioned we have been growing, you all know, again, from campaigns, all school board um, candidates talk about the growth in our public schools. The county grew, if you saw from the census, 15% in the last 10 years. Our local public schools grew 25% in the last 10 years. We've had rapid growth. We have had the bills that I started on the school board. We needed 5,000 new seats, and we have built them. We built three elementary schools. We built a new middle school. We have a new high school program. We have an expansion of Washington Liberty High School. And we've done another small project, too. So this year, and um, if you've been um, you know, following the school news, you know that every year we're talking about different boundary changes because we've been opening new schools. We're opening that third new elementary school. We just opened it. Cardinal Elementary, and we, you know, every time we open the school, we have to do boundaries. This year, we're going to do some minor adjustments. We have two schools that are still a little bit too crowded, and then we are going to have addressed the growth in Arlington. We're kind of going to be on that glide path from here on out. Super exciting. That's the second thing I want to tell you about is the next super exciting thing that we're going to be doing this year, listed on there somewhere, I think. Yeah, there, this is Bob. Our capital improvement plan. In, um, because of the pandemic, we were not able to do our normal 10-year plan that we revisit every two years. We haven't had a 10-year plan since 2018. So this coming spring, we are going to be talking about the next 10 years of what our school system needs. Super exciting. We're going to be building out our career center and developing those programs. And we're probably going to finally get back to what we needed to do, which is renovate um, and perhaps expand some of our oldest schools in our system. Because we've been growing fast, we can let some of those Older schools have had to sit and wait in the queue. We're going to finally get back to those. Super excited. And then the last big thing that we're going to be doing this year is the toughest, which is the budget. Um, we are still in the pandemic economy locally, and you all know that we get most of our revenues from, from the county board, and that is going to be a really tough time. But because of the community support, I think we're going to make it through, and again, we're going to continue supporting those students every single day. So thank you all so much, and we'll see you out there. Thank you, Barbara, and thank you to all of our school board members for their incredible work. And I, I, I couldn't agree more. 
that you know, the work that is happening in our schools is so important. Um, this is why we endorse candidates every year in the school board race, because we need Democratic leadership in the schools. I will be fighting every step of the way for Mary Kudera. And I know you are with me there. Uh, because these issues in our schools are too important for Democrats to sit on the sidelines. And we need to back our candidates that will gain a policy priority that makes sense in our interest. Thank you to all of our uh, school board members and candidates for, for doing that. Folks, if you will believe it, we have rocketed through our agenda and we are at the end. Yeah, I know. Awesome job, everybody. If you need to hear something that excited you, that piqued your interest, you weren't paying enough attention, but fear not, because we will again put these slides up on our website, ArlingtonDemocrats.org. Please check out these slides. There is so much going on, so many fun events, so many ways to get involved. There truly is something for everybody, and we need everybody. You heard tonight all of the different issues that are on the line. This is why we fight. I can't be as eloquent as Matt Royer. It's impossible. But he told you all of the reasons. It's the same with Carissa. There is so much to fight for, so much to look forward to. We can make it happen, but we have got to elect Democrats in November. Let us get it done. I like to have a first. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. I will see you on the campaign trail. Let's go fight and win. Thank you. And buy your gold card.